In this video, we're going to go through a comprehensive physical examination of the knee. Let's take a look. The knee exam begins with a visual inspection to check for outward signs of injury, including misalignment of the joint, bruising, swelling, abrasions, or any other obvious signs of trauma. Next, the doctor will check the knee's range of motion. It's important to report pain, clicking, or grinding that occurs as your knee goes from full extension to full flexion as this can provide clues to possible structural injuries. Sometimes, significant swelling of the knee can limit your motion, and your doctor may elect to aspirate or drain your knee. This can relieve the pressure and also provide clues to determine the issue at hand. For example, after an acute injury such as an ACL tear, the fluid will likely appear bloody. If there is fat level in the fluid, this can indicate a fracture. Next, your doctor will physically touch various spots on the knee looking for tenderness or swelling. As you can see, the location of these symptoms can provide a preliminary diagnosis of which structure may be injured. Now let's move on to some more specific physical exam tests. To assess a possible injury to the ACL, the Lachman test is performed. With the knee flexed about 30 degrees, your doctor will stabilize the femur with one hand and pull forward on the tibia with the other. If the ACL is intact, there should be a firm endpoint, as the ligament will prevent the tibia from subluxing forward. A soft or absent endpoint can indicate a torn ACL. To ensure legitimacy, the same test is always administered to the uninjured leg as well, so the results can be compared. Similar to the Lachman test, the anterior drawer test is performed with the knee flexed all the way to 90 degrees. Again, if the ACL is intact, there will be a firm endpoint and minimal translation. If there is a torn ACL, this endpoint will be diminished and the tibia will translate farther. To check the PCL, the doctor will perform the posterior drawer test. This is conducted in a very similar fashion to the anterior drawer test, except instead of pulling on the tibia, he'll attempt to push it posteriorly. An intact PCL will firmly stop the subluxation of the tibia. If it's torn, the endpoint will be diminished. The exam then moves on to the other ligaments of the knee. By applying inward, or valgus stress, and outward, or varus stress, your doctor can assess the MCL, medial collateral ligament, and LCL, lateral collateral ligament. First, he applies these stresses with the knee fully extended, then with the knee flexed to about 30 degrees. When the knee is extended, varus valgus stress is controlled by a combination of the major ligaments in the knee. When the knee is flexed, varus, or outward stress, is controlled mostly by the LCL, while valgus, or inward stress, is controlled mostly by the MCL. So, if there is increased opening of the joint only when the knee is in this flexed position, it suggests an isolated injury to either the MCL or LCL. If there is opening of the joint in both extension and flexion, it suggests injuries to multiple ligaments, such as the ACL and PCL. To check the medial and lateral meniscus, your doctor will perform McMurray's test. To assess the medial meniscus, the knee is rotated outward and taken from flexion to extension, while the medial joint line is palpated. To assess the lateral meniscus, the knee is rotated outward and taken from flexion to extension, while the lateral joint line is palpated. If there is pain or a palpable click with either of these motions, it may indicate a meniscus injury. The dial test is an exam for rotational instability. Here, the doctor is trying to determine if there has been damage done to the structures that stabilize the posterior lateral knee, such as the LCL, popliteus, and biceps femoris. While lying prone, your doctor will hold both legs by the foot or ankle and rotate them externally, comparing them side by side. If the injured knee rotates more than 10 degrees or significantly more than the opposite knee, it can indicate an injury. This test is performed at different angles of knee flexion to assess which structures may have been injured. If there is increased external rotation at 30 degrees, it suggests an injury to the posterior lateral corner. If rotation is increased at both 30 and 90 degrees, it suggests an injury to the PCL as well. The final test we'll illustrate is called the pivot shift test. This test can provide a very accurate assessment of ACL integrity. However, the movement can be very uncomfortable, so it's usually reserved for the operating room when you're already under anesthesia. With the leg placed in extension and slight internal rotation, the doctor will gently provide an inward or valgus stress on the knee. If the ACL is injured, this will sublux or shift the tibia out of place. The knee is then taken into flexion. As this happens, 
the tibia will noticeably shift back into its proper alignment due to the pull of the iliotibial band. So there you have it. No shortage of tests, right? And there are so many more. It's like putting your knee through midterms. But with so many ligaments and structures to assess in the knee, it's important for your doctor to conduct a thorough physical exam so that they can properly diagnose the injury. Remember, the sooner they can identify the problem, the sooner they can help you get on the road to recovery. Ready, Set, Med is your one-stop destination for all of your medical needs.